In the second lecture, we will talk about energy in the atmosphere. So what do you think is the motor of the atmosphere that drives the atmospheric circulation and is the cause of the winds? Right, it's the sun. The sun is the source of all the energy in the Earth system. The sun is a main sequence star. It's almost 6,000 kelvins hot and emits electromagnetic radiation. Actually, all bodies emit electromagnetic radiation and the wavelength distribution depends on the temperature of the body. The energy comes from the sun as short wavelength solar radiation that reaches the ground of the Earth and is absorbed by it. The Earth also emits electromagnetic radiation but with a different, longer wavelength, so-called thermal radiation. Now the atmosphere interacts differently with this short wavelength solar radiation and the long wavelength thermal radiation. We have the so-called greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that efficiently absorb this long wavelength thermal radiation and prevent it escaping to the space and radiate it back to the surface of the Earth, warming the surface. This is the so-called greenhouse effect. And due to this natural greenhouse effect, the global mean temperature is plus 14 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees warmer than it would be without it. So without this natural greenhouse effect, we would live in a freezer with minus 18 degrees Celsius average temperature. These greenhouse gases are most importantly water vapor that causes approximately 60% of the natural greenhouse effect. Also carbon dioxide, methane and some others. Now humans have increased the concentrations of some of these greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and this strengthens the greenhouse effect. So the more we have the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, the stronger is the greenhouse effect that warms the surface. You could think of a blanket around the Earth. The thicker the blanket is, the warmer you have below it. Let's take a look of the Earth's energy budget. So the energy comes from the sun as incoming solar radiation, approximately 340 watts per square meter. A fraction of it is directly reflected by clouds and the atmosphere to the space, and a fraction is also reflected by the surface directly to the space. A small fraction is also absorbed by the atmosphere, but approximately half of the incoming solar radiation is absorbed by the surface. The surface emits electromagnetic radiation as long wavelength thermal uh, radiation that is then absorbed by the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The atmosphere also emits thermal radiation to all directions, so both to the space and back to the surface of the Earth. And this back, radius, back radiation from the atmosphere to the surface warms again the surface. Now if you take a look at these numbers in the radiative balance, you see that the surface of the Earth actually gets a bit more radiation than it emits. And this is balanced by two terms that are a bit difficult, but I will describe them next. First of these terms is thermals, or so-called sensible heat flux. In sensible heat flux, heat is exchanged directly from the surface uh, to the air. It happens not via radiation, but by molecular diffusion. So the air molecules closest to the surface get the heat from the surface directly to the air molecules. This happens in the very lowest one millimeter of the air uh, only. But when the lowest one millimeter of air 
uh, heats up. The warmer air is lighter than a colder air and it starts to rise. And this starts a turbulent mixing where warmer air rises up and is replaced by cooler air. And the warmer air rises in so-called thermals and heat is exchanged from the lower parts of the atmosphere to the upper parts of the atmosphere. This phenomena is also called as convection. The other term is latent heat flux. And latent heat flux is related to transformations of state of water. So when water changes state from gas to liquid, a heat is released. Same happens also when water changes phase from liquid to ice and vice versa. When ice melts or water droplets evaporate, heat is absorbed. So if we have a wet surface that is heated by the sun and it evaporates, heat is absorbed from the surface to the water vapor. And water vapor can be transported to different parts of the atmosphere. And when a cloud is formed, the vapor condenses as cloud droplets and heat is again released. So energy is transported from the surface to the atmosphere and to different parts of the atmosphere by transformation of state of water that is the so-called latent heat flux. How is climate change and air pollutants then related? We already discussed that the greenhouse gases efficiently absorb thermal radiation and cause the greenhouse effect. Increased concentrations of some of these greenhouse gases have increased the back radiation from the atmosphere to the surface and increased the surface temperature causing the so-called global warming. But we also have the other air pollutants like SO2, noxies and particulate pollutants that are very important to air quality, but their effects on climate vary. Aerosol particles in the atmosphere affect the radiative transfer. They scatter the solar radiation and reduce the amount of solar radiation reaching the ground and thus cool the surface. Some aerosols, especially black carbon, absorb solar radiation and thus warm the climate. Aerosol particles also act as cloud condensation nuclei. The more nuclei there is, the more and smaller cloud droplets there are in the cloud, and the brighter is the cloud. Bright clouds reflect the solar radiation efficiently back to the space and thus cool the soft surface. Aerosol effects on clouds are very complex and studied a lot at the moment. They cause the largest uncertainties in our understanding of the forces of the current climate change. The effect of the anthropogenic emissions on a climate is described by the term radiative forcing. Greenhouse gases have a positive radiative forcing. That means that they warm the climate. The uncertainty in the estimations is described by a black error bar in the figure. Aerosol effects are mainly cooling the climate, but some, like black carbon, are warming too. The aerosol effects, especially those related to clouds, are the largest uncertainties in our understanding of the forces of the current climate change. In total, however, we know that the anthropogenic emissions have warmed the climate since the pre-industrial times.